The actress Mira Fuchs has long set her sights on directing her own feature after making a number of very well received short films. And she's dived in headfirst with a bewitching blend of fairy tale and social satire with Judy and Punch. It's a world that seems set in the 17th century in the town of Seaside, which is nowhere near the sea. It's where Judy, Mia Wasikowska and Punch, Damon Herriman, and their baby daughter live in Judy's old home with servants, the demented Scaramouche, Terry Norris, and Maud the maid, Brenda Palmer. Seaside is also host to a stoning day where so-called witches are put to death by the villagers, urged on by Mr. Frankly, Tom Budge. Happy stoning day. Judy and Punch put on a show at the local inn, which goes down a treat, but Punch has dreams of a bigger career. He is, however, a drinker. And when disaster happens to the baby and he beats Judy seemingly to death, he blames the two servants for their disappearance. That's the way to do it! Meanwhile, Judy, uncovered in the forest by Scotty, a delightful Daisy accent, is given refuge in a heretic's camp inhabited by people who've escaped from village stonings and which is treated by Dr Goodtime, Gillian Jones. Judy is determined to have her revenge on Punch. Well, talk about ambitious. This film takes you on an occasionally funny, occasionally gruesome ride, referencing the traditional Punch and Judy puppet show with characters like Constable Derek, Benedict Hardy, the dog and the sausages, and inventively, the crocodile. It's been very well directed by Fuchs, nicely shot by Stefan Duccio, and beautifully stitched together by one of this country's preeminent editors, Danny Cooper. Francois Teta's score adds to the enjoyment, with some anachronistic touches from Leonard Cohen and others. Damon Herriman is just outstanding as Punch, and as always, Mia Wasikowska mesmerises as Judy. Now, my one hesitation with the film is the final declamatory speech by Judy. It's just a bit didactic when you feel the point could have been made more subtly. How interesting is this movie on, it's, on so many levels? It's, yeah. it's like, a, a, in a way, a, a Me Too era of a feminist fable about how the, the punches of the entertainment industry should no longer pull the strings. You know, it's. Uh, uh, I think that's possibly what uh, she's getting at. Yes. Uh, in, in this, in, on so many levels, but uh, then it's hard to know because it, it, there are just so many ideas, as you suggest. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's like a look at a. It has resonance because it's kind of like a, a, a dystopian past that's getting that's very like the increasingly dystopian present <laughs> that we're living in as well. Uh, I mean, there's just so many things happening here. The, it's cruel. It's satirical. It's funny. It's uh, uh, it's colourful. And I love the way that the the real events in the in the show parallel the um, the events of um, Punch and, the Punch and Judy show itself, yeah. which is very clever. That brings about all the, the disasters that befall the, the couple. Uh, it, it, intriguing and beautifully directed yeah. by this young director. She's a real talent. She's, yeah, she she's, is. She's, she's better than most of the men directing in this country, I reckon. I mean, <laughs> few, few people would be so daring as to take on a script like this and to push and pull it well, in so many different interesting directions. That's what I think. Mm. I think for a first film to be so daring... I, I, I really, you've got to admire her. Mm. I think it's, and she's pulled it off. You know, I mean, to pitch it at that level and get those performances at that level mm. that convince in this sort of like unreal world mm. in a way, I think is a real achievement. Look, I'm giving this four stars. I'm giving it four as well. I think it's, you know, really mm. a great achievement for her. Does that little punchy guy always win? He won't be winning anymore. <laughs>